right, so you said uh, PBCO3, is that right? Yeah, and then plus H2SO4. All right, um, what was the state you got for PBCO3? Well, the state, uh, I, didn't, I didn't put no state, but I think it would be a solid. Solid? And did anybody else put a state here? Solid? Solid's correct. Um, carbonates are all insoluble, except for group one and ammonia. Carbonates, phosphates, all these higher charged anions would be insoluble. H2SO4, what's the state there? Aqueous. Aqueous is correct. Aqueous is optional, but solid is mandatory. Okay, uh, then what did you use then? H2CO3. H2CO3. I don't like to see H2CO3 because no, H2CO3 is is going to decompose immediately. So I, I'd rather not see that in the equation. I'd rather see what it decomposes to. What does it decompose to? H2O. H2O and uh, <coughs> H2O is a liquid and CO2 is a gas. And so, yeah, I prefer not, so what some people do is they tend to put H2CO3 in the complete equation and then in the ionic equation they bring it apart, but the ionic equation and the complete equation are supposed to be the same thing, represent the exact same reaction. And so we don't want a different reaction for our ionic equation, so we just break it off apart at the beginning. So H2CO3 is correct, except it decomposes, and so we should put the decomposition products because um, if we try to capture H2CO3, we're not going to be successful. It, you know, it's going to already have decomposed into water and CO2. And so we're going to see effervescence. The CO2 is going to come off as a gas. CO2 is insoluble in water. CO2 is nonpolar. Water is polar. So uh, they're unlike, so they don't move on. Okay, what, what was the other product? And then PVSO4. PVSO4. That's correct. What did you put down for the state for PVSO4? I mean, salts are either going to be solid or aqueous salts. Like, salt would be a cation and an anion. So we we'll get the lead, metal and non-metal. Um, liquid, there, there are very few molten salts, because most of the reactions we do are room temperature. Now, if you were to heat it up, maybe we can um, melt the solid into a liquid. But the only liquid that you're going to come across would be water. Have you noticed that? That's the only liquid that you encountered so far. In fact, that is going to be the only liquid you're going to encounter in Chem 4, would be water. Um, there are other liquids that could potentially form, you know, but not in this class. And so, um, just water is going to have to um, in, in a chemical reaction like this. We could have other things where we're melting things, you know, like a physical process. We're going from solid to liquid. That's always possible. So we could have liquid other things, but for chemical reactions, this will be it. Um, sulfates. Sulfates are, you know, if you guess AQ, then um, chances are you're right with the sulfate because most sulfates are soluble. And there, there are a limited number of exceptions. What are the exceptions? Most sulfates are soluble except for... Most sulfates are soluble, except for silver, lead, mercury, mercury, calcium, strontium, barium. So this one turns out to be an insoluble one. So it's one of the rare insoluble sulfates. Whereas most carbonates are insoluble, except for group one and ammonium. So this one. And so this is what we call the uh, CE. We need a driving force. What would the driving force for this? Uh, reaction B. Did anybody get the driving force for this? No. Favorable ion combination. What makes a favorable ion combination? What would you predict? Is there a favorable ion combination here? Yes or no? And if yes, what is a favorable ion combination? There are three things you look for in a favorable ion combination. One is if what forms, if a precipitate forms. 
And so we look for a precipitate because uh, precipitate would indicate that the ions are combine favorably to form a solid, which will precipitate out of the solution. So the ions like each other enough to precipitate. And things, some things don't precipitate, like sodium chloride, you know. Um, the ions don't like each other enough to precipitate out. But here, the lead and sulfate do. But this is very tricky because, yes, there is a precipitate. But, you know, when, remember when I told you that um, Chem 4 has a limited number of reaction types? Well, this, is, this reaction is normally excluded from Chem 4, but included in Chem 1A. This type of reaction is, yes, we're forming a precipitate. A precipitate is best when we have aqueous and aqueous. We take two aqueous solutions and then form a precipitate. It's clear, but this one, we have to destroy one precipitate to form another. You seem to destroy the lead 2 carbonate to form the lead 2 sulfate. Now, that isn't necessarily a straight precipitation. A straight precipitation is you're in the you know, liquid phase, the aqueous phase, and it precipitates. But in this case, um, in this case, it's not so clear if precipitate's a driving force. It would be a driving force if the lead to sulfate is a more favorable ion combination than the lead to carbonate. You could tell which one's more favorable ion combination by which one's more stable. Which one's more stable? That is harder to break apart. Harder to break apart means less soluble. Harder to break apart means higher boiling point than higher melting point. And so we don't know. And so precipitation may or may not be a driving force here, but all we need is one driving force. What else do we look for as far as driving forces go? Gas, formation of gas. So here, CO2 is a gas. So we got gas formation. Sometimes people use this up arrow to indicate the gas is going to be um, evolved in this reaction. For, you know, driving force for gas. There's one more driving force too. What is that? Going from a stronger to a weaker what? Stronger acid to weaker acid. H2SO4 is a strong acid. Carbonic or water and CO2 is weak acid. So um, weaker acids are more favorable ion combinations. Uh, you know, the H plus uh, seems to, to uh, bond more strongly than in strong acids, where the H plus is very weakly bound, weakly attached. And so we do have a driving force. We don't have to indicate precipitate because all we need is one, and in this case we have multiple. So even if the precipitation isn't favorable. Reaction should still go. All right, and then we go on to the um, ionic equation. The ionic equation, um, do we break this up into ions, lead 2 carbonate? No. Soluble salts we do, but insoluble salts we do along. H2SO4, do we break that up into ions? Yeah, what do we break apart? We break apart strong acids, strong bases, and soluble salts. In other words, the strong electrolytes. But so H2SO4, what does it break up into? Breaks up into H plus and HSO4 minus. The first one breaks off easily. The second one doesn't. This is in water. In water, the first one breaks the party easily. The second one doesn't. The, the first one breaks apart easily. It's a strong acid. But HSO4 minus is borderline. You know, it's, a, it's a weak acid. But it, it's kind of borderline strong. But it's still a weak acid. A weak acid, the H plus doesn't ionize 100%. So we just lead it together like this. And so we make sure we break it up into H plus and HSO4 minus. But in order to get PBSO4, we need the second one to break off. Well, the second one doesn't break off in water. The second one breaks off when the sulfate's attacked by lead, you know, or sulfate reacts with the lead. And so the lead can um, knock off the H plus easily. And so we end up with the two H pluses going to water and the sulfate going to the lead. Okay, does water ionize? No. Does CO2 ionize? Does PBSO4 ionize? We'd expect it to ionize, but 
It's an insoluble salt. Insoluble salts we just leave as is. Soluble salts we would break apart, but insoluble salts we would leave as is. Okay, and then we look for spectators. Are there any spectators here? There are no spectators. So the ionic equation and the net ionic equation are the same thing. So we'll be done. So we're going to start uh, looking back at chemical reactions since this is going to be a big part of the final exam. Just do so to review. All right, so that's, uh, that's our review reaction for today. Actually, we'll do one more later on. Start chapter 15. Have I started chapter 15, the PowerPoint yet? No. Did we finish chapter 14? Check. Chapter 14 was um, leaving off with gas stoichiometry. Well, actually, we didn't because uh, Richard had a couple of questions, right, on gas stoichiometry. 37 and 39, was that? All right, we'll take a look at those gas stoichiometry problems first, since I, I hadn't answered those yet. And then we'll move on to chapter 15. And so let me um, let me grab my book. Unless somebody has their book, I can just use. Really? Okay. 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 Okay